Yeah, so we're talking about diabetes. And for us to first understand diabetes, we must first understand God's beautiful design in the form of the pancreas. So the pancreas is this wonderful leaf-shaped organ that is just under the liver, more on the back side of the body. It's like, it's like close to the, to the back or the thoracic wall, well, the vertebrae that is your back, that functions generally to regulate your blood sugar levels. When I say regulate, I am talking about controlling your blood sugar levels. So there are some hormones secreted by this pancreas. Before we get to those hormones, let me tell you that the pancreas functions to do two things endocrine functions or endocrinology and exocrine functions. When you hear endocrine function, you think about hormones. And when you hear exocrine functions, you think about enzymes, right? So the, the pancreas secrete both uh, hormones and enzymes. But when we talk about diabetes, we want to talk about the insulin and the, the other hormones that is secreted by the pancreas. So let's talk about that for a bit. Let's look at another picture. This is a better picture of the pancreas. Before we actually get to talk about talking about diabetes, let me just quickly tell you, when you are young and healthy, you think you can drink enough rum. <laughs> Be careful with that. There's something called acute pancreatitis that can kill you very quickly. And the main culprit in that is drinking too much alcohol at one point in time. Y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. So all the persons who like drink rum, hey. like I'm Alina. And <laughs> Sir, 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 sir. Sir, not sir, non-alcoholic wine, sir. Non-alcoholic wine, okay. Good. So be careful with that. So good. In the pancreas, there are cells, different types of cells, many, many different types of cells. But we are concerned with two types in particular. One that we call let's see another picture. One that we call alpha cells and beta cells. Now the alpha cells, the alpha cells get A inside of it, right? So remember this way. A, the alpha cells secrete glucagon and the beta cells secrete insulin. So the alpha cells glucagon and the beta cells insulin. So your alpha cells, what the, is here, This is very advanced, but not, don't worry with this. Focus on this. The alpha cells of the pancreas secrete glucagon and the beta cells secrete insulin, all right? So normally the pancreas is going to secrete insulin and glucagon. What happens normally? When you consume a meal that is rich in starch, or glucose, the body will need to not make your glucose level, your blood sugar level go too high. For your body to regulate that glucose level, it will need to secrete insulin, all right? Insulin brings down your blood glucose level to maintain that constant level. What's that term called? When the body maintains a constant internal environment? Homeostasis. Very good. Homeostasis. So your body will always try to maintain homeostasis. If your blood sugar levels goes too high, if your blood sugar level goes too high, your body will secrete what? If it goes too high. Insulin. Uh, insulin. 
insulin. Good. And if the body is going to detect that the blood glucose level is too low, let's say the person did not eat all day, what would the, the pancreas release instead? Glucagon. Good. Glucagon. The opposite. So what happens when the body secretes these hormones? When insulin is secreted, insulin makes the excess glucose in the blood go into cells. So it acts as a key, really. It's a, let me just see if a video, a nice video, but I can't show a video. Because if I show a video, I will not be able to post on YouTube because that's copyright law. So I can't do that. Let me try to explain it with you. So what happens is that insulin acts as a key. And when the blood glucose level is too high, your body has to get rid of some of that glucose. So what insulin does, insulin opens all your cells and allow those cells to take in, in, to take in glucose. If the body is going to take in glucose, what's going to happen to the amount of glucose in the blood? in the bloodstream? The increase. You sure about that? If the blood, the blood glucose level was too high, so the body is now trying to get rid of that high level of glucose. So insulin is acting on the body cells to pull out glucose from the circulating blood. What's going to happen to the glucose in the circulating blood? What's going to happen to that level? It's going to decrease. It decreases. Oh, it decrease. As it decreases, that will now result in homeostasis being achieved or maintained. But let's say now somebody is starving. Oh, and that process largely happens in the liver. The liver is where you will have also conversion of glucose to glycogen. All right? So this is something you have to remember as well. Glucose is often converted to glycogen in the liver. And all of that happens just so your body doesn't have too high levels of glucose in the blood. Because the high level of glucose in the blood is toxic to your body cells. Let me show you this. Mm. I'm trying to show you the effects of high levels of insulin on the body, high levels of glucose on the body. And high levels of glucose on the body affects really all cells of the body, every single cell. And the most common one, especially with men, that men would want to hear about is erectile dysfunction. If your blood glucose level is constantly high for a long period of time, it can result in erectile dysfunction. The guy can't stand up. And that's when men become real alarmed. That's when they run and go to all, all the doctors just to solve the problem. That's when they get very serious, right? But it affects every organ. It affects your heart, it affects your brain, it affects your eyes, your kidneys, your skin, your nerves, everything it affects. So that's why you wanna keep the blood glucose level at a minimum. So let's talk quickly about what glucagon does and then we will talk about what happens in diabetes now. Now, glucagon is supposed to be the hormone that is going to increase your blood glucose level if that level becomes too low. Let's say you are you have not eaten for the day, you're starving, or you are fasting. Your blood glucose level, if you're fasting, would be high or low? Low. Low, sir. Low. Low. If it's low, what that, will what that will result in is that your body would need to maintain that homeostasis 
by producing some amount of glucose. What's the first thing you think the body will try to do to get glucose inside the, the cells or inside the bloodstream? We talked about earlier. Remember we talked about excess glucose being stored around the liver as what? Glycogen. Glycogen, good. The first thing the body does is try to break down glycogen stores. That's a process called glycoly glycolysis. But you don't need to know about that at CXC level. What I want to let you know is that when you break down those glucose stores, that will result in an increase in your blood sugar levels. So when your body secretes glucagon, glucagon breaks down glycogen to free up glucose. So you have an increase in your glucose level in the blood. In diabetes now, there are two types of diabetes, type one and type two. And pay attention to this because this is the one that many persons oftentimes don't understand. So pay attention because I want you all to get this. So pay attention to this diagram here. So in the healthy pancreas, insulin is released. And like I told you, insulin, look at the, look at the cursor here. Insulin acts like a key that opens up your cells and allow those cells to take in glucose. Can you see that? Yes, no? Yes. Sir. Yes. So if the cell is going to take in glucose, more and more glucose are going to, more and more glucose molecules will go into the cell. That will decrease the glucose in the bloodstream. In type 1 diabetes, there is something that causes a destruction of the beta cells of the pancreas. Remember the beta cells of the pancreas secrete what? Uh, insulin. Insulin. Right. So if there is destruction of the beta cells of the pancreas, what's going to happen to the body? It's right here. Pancreas failure to produce insulin. The pancreas doesn't produce insulin. If the pancreas fail to produce insulin, in fact, it does produce insulin but it produces a very, very small amount. It's not enough to sustain the body. So if there's no insulin, all of this glucose, excess glucose, the person still eating, the person eating, the person eating, the person eating, they stop eating. And the body, they're gonna eat more and more because as well, the body thinks that the problem is that they don't have enough glucose. So the person's gonna feel hungry and they're trying to eat more glucose. All of that will be circulating in the blood and that becomes problematic for the individual over time. Type two diabetes now is a bit different. I'm begging you to pay attention to this one. This is the most common one. Before we go on to this, I'll just tell you that type one diabetes is actually caused by many viruses, such as um, Epstein-Barr virus, big fancy viruses. And I, be, I do believe too that there's some, there's no evidence to support this, but this is my theory. Some, something I'm, I'm thinking about. A change in climate can also be a, a predisposing factor. Or it might just be a change in climate will result in a person contracting a virus that will cause this destruction of the beta cells. But at least five persons I know went to the US as children and developed type one diabetes. I am not saying when you go to the US you get diabetes, but I'm saying a change in climate might be a result of you contracting some kind of viral infection, which will lead to the destruction of your beta cells. If you didn't remember anything I just said, it's okay, it's fine. Let's go on. Type two diabetes. This is the most common. 
The problem with this here is what we call insulin resistance. So what's happening? The person is fat. The person is obese. What happens with that? Because the person is obese, insulin is not working. The receptors that collect insulin is not able to collect those insulin molecules to allow for glucose to go into the cell. So what happens is as if the cell can use the insulin that's being produced. And if the cell can't use insulin that's being produced, glucose is not gonna get into the blood cell and glucose will be building up in the bloodstream. Over a period of time, this results in destruction of the beta cells as well. And over a period of time, this also results in a lack of insulin secretion. Anybody think they understand what I just said? Well, sir, yes, sir. how is it that, what, uh, not how, why is it that um, when the person is obese, it does not accept the insulin, sir? All right, so you, for you to do that, it's going a bit higher than your pay grade. You don't need to go to CXC purposes, but I'm going to tell you nonetheless. Fat, fat tissue or adipose tissue has some capabilities of inhibiting the functioning of your insulin and the insulin receptors. So too much fat inhibits this binding between the insulin and the insulin receptor, all right? So I don't wanna to go into too much details of it, but that is the background of it. The, the, the chemicals that the fat cells release, y'all still hearing me? Um, no, sir, just why you, you cut off a good listening. Yes, sir. Right, yeah, it just showed me that my, my signal was weak. Yeah, so I was saying the person that is fat has increased adipose tissue. The adipose tissue. Sorry, I cut off again. Testing, testing. Yes, 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 I can hear you. The person that is fat, the person that's obese, has excess adipose tissue. The adipose tissue or the fat tissue secretes chemicals that interfere with the binding of insulin and the insulin receptor. So because of that fat and the chemicals that the fat cells release, this is not happening. And when this is not happening, this glucose molecule then can go into the cell. If that glucose molecule can go into the cell, more and more glucose will be building up inside the blood vessel, resulting in, in the problems that's associated with diabetes. Over a period of time, the pancreas will secrete more and more insulin because it thinks that the problem is a lack of insulin. So the, the pancreas will secrete more and more and more and more until the pancreas begin to burn out. So over a period of time, the pancreas stops producing insulin and results in this kind of diabetes. Type 2 doesn't become type 1, but the later effects of type 2 is the same effects of type 1. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. If, yes, you, understand, sir. if you understand that, you are, are automatically a medical yes. student which is very good. Um, but simplicity is this. With diabetes, there is little or insulin that is secreted is not working. Little insulin or no insulin. Insulin is secreted or it's not working, right? And what happens as a result? Glucose builds up in the blood. When glucose level builds up in the blood, that poisons every organ of the human body. It's a chronic disease, it's a chronic condition. It happens over a period of time. The longer it happens, the longer the, the blood glucose level remains high, the more problems you have as a result. So you have conditions that would affect the eyes, cause retinopathy, the kidney, nephropathy, uh, the nerves, neuropathy, uh, erectile dysfunction in men, 
And all of that is as a result of there being too much sugar in the blood. One thing I did not tell you about is the wonderful effects of exercising. Exercising actually promotes the binding of insulin to these receptors. And when insulin binds there, as you exercise more and more, more and more glucose will go into the cell, all right? So if a person, if a person is newly diagnosed with diabetes, the doctor will often recommend the person try to do some physical exercise, do some more activities. Mm -hmm. If the person does that, they can try to delay the actual development of diabetes. Is that making sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ooh. Yes. Great. Questions? So, sir, when you're staged with type 2 diabetes, there is no possible cure for it, right, sir? Right, there's no cure. Once you develop diabetes, there is no cure anymore. But there's treatment. To delay the effects, as you said. To prevent the effects prevent. as long as possible, yeah. And one of the major things that you have to try to do is to have these people use a balanced diet, not diet rich in starch. People think, diabetic people think that when they don't eat sweet things, their blood sugar level shouldn't be rising. That is not true. If you eat two roti, if you eat a whole plantain, if you eat a whole uh, ground provision, let's say cassava, sweet potato, edo, potato, your blood sugar will rise because those starchy mm. things contain high levels of glucose. Those starchy things break down to glucose. So people don't often understand that. So they don't see the reason when doctors tell them to cut down on the starch, cut down on the rice, cut down on the, the plantain, the uh, roti. <laughs> people. Because starch is converted to a lot of glucose. Yes. The reason why you have starch is that the plant couldn't store all the glucose as glucose. So you have to convert it to a polymer. The polymer is starch. So when you break down the starch, it's breaking down to lots of glucose. So even though you don't taste it's sweet, it is actually very sweet. It's sweet to the point where you can't taste it. <laughs> right. Any other questions, comments? Is it clear? You think you understand diabetes? Now, I'm not teaching you guys, I am not teaching you to just be ready for CXC. I am teaching you because I know when I teach you all here, almost all of you know a diabetic patient. Almost all of you know somebody who has diabetes or has sugar that is not taking their medication. And the reason for not taking the medication might just be the fact that they, they don't know the effects that diabetes can have on them. You are now empowered to inform them of the effects it can have on them. It can affect every organ in the body. All you gotta tell a man, if your grandfather wants taking medication, all you gotta tell him, erectile dysfunction. You gotta see how quick you got it. What's that? Heart attack, stroke. Those are some of the problems that can result with the heart and the brain. It's very, very serious, guys. And I'm going to challenge all of us to try to do more exercise. I have to do it as well. So I'm not just telling you. I have to also do it. To get down some of the, the, the fat that might predispose you to insulin resistance. Any comments? Other questions? No, sir. 
All right, good. So we'll stop there. And we will see each other again later. All right, so we have English B later on.